السلام عليكم uh, welcome everyone uh, I'm Dr. Mahmoud I'm happy to uh, present this lecture today which is uh, the orientation MRCGB orientation lecture um, this lecture in this lecture uh, we will talk about few topics but before that I would like to introduce myself I'm Dr. Mahmoud al Amari. I finished MRCGB international uh, in South Asia Center in March 2018. This was my OSCE exam. Alhamdulillah, I passed part one uh, from first attempt and uh, OSCE from first attempt. And that's why I named the courses as one shot to help you all to pass the exams in one shot by proper preparation, inshallah. Uh, first of all, uh, we will, in this lecture, we will discuss what is MRCGB International? What is the benefits and recognition of MRCGB? Uh, exam centers and dates and fees. How to prepare for applied knowledge part one exam? And what can one shot courses provide to you in part one preparation? And how to prepare for OSCE or CC exam? And what can one shot courses provide to you in OSCE exam preparation and how to apply for the MRCGB international exams. And we will give room for questions at the end. My mission is to put your name right here. This is my mission to help you all to put your name right here. And there are two ways to help you to put your name right here. The difficult way, which is to put it by Photoshop. And since I am not expert in Photoshop and Photoshop is very difficult for me, and also I may go to jail. So the, easy, the easier one, the easier one is to uh, help you to go through this exam and get this certificate, inshallah. Uh, what is MRCGB? MRCGB stands for Membership of Royal College of General Practitioners. It's postgraduate qualification of family medicine specialty, as you all know, that in UK, family medicine is called general practice. Uh, it's awarded by the Royal College of General Practitioners, London, UK. So it's not awarded by South Asia or Dubai or any other center. The one awarding the, the certificate is the Royal College directly. So when you pass the exams, you will have to contact the RCGP to get your certificate. Exams held in seven international centers, but none of them is UK. So UK does not have any center for MRCGB international. We'll go through that in details inshallah. To get the membership, you must complete the full MRCGB international examinations of any international center, then pay the annual membership fees. Uh, this is something maybe some of you don't know that there are annual membership fees that you have to pay after finishing the MRCGB examinations in order to get your certificate and to get your annual membership in RCGP website and to be an official member. Uh, just a few hint about the annual fees it's different from one country to another, depending on which country you are working on, not which country you are from, not your nationality, your, the country you are working on. They are dividing into high income countries, low income countries, and depending on that, you, you, they will ask you for fees. These fees are important to get the first certificate. Those who uh, don't wish to renew the membership and pay the annual fees uh, every year, uh, they need to, at least in the first year, to do a credentialize, credentialization or credentialing to their certificate, means use the data flow or whatsoever, uh, because the RCGP will not respond to the uh, verification uh, or credentializing uh, companies if you did not pay the fees. Uh, if you, I, like for example, after two or three years, you did not pay, if, uh, if any company ask about you, whether you are a graduate of, uh, or a member, they will answer as no, we do not recognize this person. So you have to pay the annual fees if you would like to be, uh, to have a reply from data flow or credentialing whatsoever for any job. Okay. After five years of membership, in case you pay the annual fees yearly, you may apply for the fellowship, which is, uh, which is uh, FRCGP International. By fulfilling the criteria, which include 
continuous maintenance of good standing, which is between brackets to pay <laughs> the annual fees. This is the most important. And significant contribution to family medicine. You should make some kind of portfolio that you have contributed to a community uh, activities or to a research or whatsoever. And the best news, which is very new, that recommendation of a fellow is not required anymore. Before, it was one of the requirements to be recommended by an F and a previous FRCGP uh, international member, but uh, this what this is cancelled. Uh, this is not required anymore. This is very good news to those who want the FRCGP. Uh, what uh, what's the benefit of FRCGP? We will get to that later uh, because some uh, one of the countries, which is Qatar, uh, require FRCGP uh, to be a specialist in family medicine. Now let's get to the benefits. What's the benefits of uh, MRCGP? Uh, first of all, improve your skills in family medicine approach and management. I'm talking about my own experience, and I believe lots of colleagues who graduated from uh, MRCGB, they totally agree with me that it totally changed the way you think and behave in your clinic. And also similar to PLAB exams, those who want to extend to PLAB exams and OET speaking uh, subset, sometimes the OET uh, uh, people who want to go for OET there is speaking sub, sub test. Uh, it's very easy uh, if you're already aware of MRCGB or you passed MRCGB, you don't have even to prepare for it. It's the same principle of the exam. Uh, of course, a lot easier. And uh, by the way, in PLAB exams, the, the practical part of PLAB exam is the same as MRCGB, but it's much, much easier. And I, uh, I tell you a story about my, uh, my cousin. He, he passed the PLAB and he told me about one case in which he passed, the, and he told me what he did in this scenario. I told him, believe me, if you did the same in MRCGP exams, you will definitely fail. You will definitely fail this case. So uh, when you pass MRCGP, uh, believe me, uh, lots of exams after that will be much easier for you. Uh, the, three, the third benefit, which is e-learning materials, access and online venues, and lots of other benefits are in rcgb.org.uk. It's a very excellent website. It has e-learning materials, up-to-date materials, that you will have full access to it if you are a member and you continue your membership. Now let's move to the recognitions. Recognitions in many countries, let's start with the Gulf country, uh, UAE, uh, United Arab Emirates recognized as specialist family medicine. After three years of clearing MRCGB international, you can apply for a specialist position in UAE. In Saudi Arabia, also recognized as specialist family medicine by either two ways. Either the first way is after two years experience in family medicine, after clearing MRCGB international, that the experience should be in accredited training centers in Saudi Arabia in family medicine specialty. We will get to those training centers later. Uh, or the other option is after four years of clearing MRCGB International, if you have experience in family medicine anywhere outside or inside Saudi Arabia. Uh, by the way, all the experience in the following countries are after MRCGB. They are not looking, they are not considering about the experience before MRCGB, even if it were 20 years, unfortunately. You have to uh, count, start counting from the day you get the MRCGB certificate. Uh, those are the, the accredited centers in Saudi Arabia. There are many centers, many hospitals, and many uh, primary care centers. You can refer to it in this website, in the uh, Saudi Council uh, website, if you would like to know what are the centers that can, uh, that uh, if you have experience in it, experience and not training, experience only, you can have you can be specialist after two years only, not four years. Also in Saudi Arabia, but I'm not sure about this. It's still there or not. But I know I know personally that some of the colleagues have it. That holders of MRCGB International working in MOH in Saudi Arabia can get 50% increase of basic salary, even before Saudi Health Specialty Cognition of Speciality when they acquire the MRCGB International, because it's considered as postgraduate qualification and you can apply to get a 50 increase of basic salary, but I'm not sure if they still do it or not. Uh, in Pakistan, uh, it's recently recognized as specialist equivalent to MCPS qualification. 
And in Egypt, it's recognized as specialist or third consultant by a medical syndicate, but not the MOH. Of course, Egyptian doctors, you know what's the, what's the difference between medical syndicate and MOH. Medical syndicate is the but should be credentialized first by Supreme Council of University. You have to get the first from the University of the University. You have accreditation, and then you can apply for the medical syndicate. Uh, there are uh, the, the previous countries that we mentioned, graduates of all centers are treated the same. This means South Asia, the same as Dubai, the same as Cyprus, the same as Egypt, same as all the centers are treated the same. The following centers, not all graduates of the centers are treated the same. Only the Kuwaiti nationality candidates in Kuwait are recognized as specialist family medicine after acquiring MRCHB International. This is something only specific for Kuwaiti nationality candidates. And also in Cyprus, the Cyprus nationality candidates are recognized as specialist family medicine after acquiring MRCHB International in their own country and in the uh, European countries. Uh, something related to the treaties between the Euro countries, but only for Cyprus nationality candidates, not all the candidates. Now we finished the recognition. Oh, this is a surprise to some of you, I think. It's not recognized in UK. How come? This is uh, a question that actually it's difficult to answer. Let me be honest with you. And uh, even I, I was uh, confused about this issue and even I emailed the GMC website and RCGP website, and this is what GMC replied to me. I'll just read you the text exactly as it's sent to me in the email. While the MRCGP examination meets the rigorous standards which are set and accredited by the RCGP, so this, this is a recognition. This is clearly a recognition. It doesn't confer holders of this qualification any right to practice as a GP in the UK. And this means totally contradiction and totally, uh, and you can say, I, I, don't, I have no comment to, you can read that and you can easily understand that this is obvious contradiction that they are accrediting us, but the RCGP is different than the GMC. Each one has its own way of thinking, unfortunately. Uh, there's another way for people, I would like you to know about MRCGP International for working in UK. As you hold a family medicine, general practice qualification, you may be eligible to apply for CEGPR pathway. This is a pathway for any overseas candidate who have any postgraduate qualification in family medicine, they can apply for the, this pathway, which is the CEGPR without having PLAB to work as specialist GP or GP in UK. Uh, the CEGPR is an application where you show that your knowledge, skills, and experience are equivalent to the complete certificate training curriculum standards, the one that the MRCGP UK are uh, trained to. I think now it's clear. You are just showing competency. You are just uh, making a good CV, a good portfolio uh, overall about yourself, uh, about your experience, about your uh, skills, everything, and present it to them and apply. We strongly advise applicants to read the specialty specific guidance, the RCGP guidance and CCT curriculum carefully. Should you be successful in your CEGPR application, you will need to join the induction and refresher scheme. Upon completion of the scheme, you'll be allowed to work independently as a GP in the NHS. So, this is a way to work as a UK, uh, as a GP in UK using MRCGB International. But I don't know a single person who have tried this pathway. Uh, this pathway seems uh, complicated, we can say, I'm not saying difficult, but complicated and no guarantee that it will success, no guarantee. If you are not confident, they say like this, if uh, that you will be successful in CEPGR, uh, CGBR uh, application, you may apply to join the three-year training program, which is the MRCGB UK. This is what they mean. It may be possible to shorten. So this is the other solution. Shorten the three-year training program with experience you have gained in your country. So you may apply with MRCGB International and your experiences and apply to MRCGB UK 
and get a less than three year training program. You will be uh, interested if, if you should you be interested in shorting the GP training program, please let me know so that I can provide you with more information. The more information I believe is simply the, the procedures uh, or papers to apply and eventually all those papers are going to be uh, presented to a, a committee that will study your papers individually, but no single, no rules applies. Uh, they will study each uh, case independently, individually. And if they see that you are competent to, to have less than three years training program, they will allow you for that. This is the GMC reply to inquiry email I sent about uh, MRCGP International. My own comment is that this is total, uh, I believe, total nonsense because uh, RCGP is accrediting MRCGP International, why GMC is not. Yeah, and the, there are two uh, uh, departments or two uh, committees in the same country and they are uh, working in different directions. So this is totally, uh, we can say, uh, and at least to know, I need you to know things as they are really are. Uh, but uh, yani my advice after that, that whoever wants to work in UK, the PLAB is shorter way. Just get the PLAB and apply for MRCGB UK and get three-year training program. So what's the problem? You will get very good experience and you will eventually you will be a consultant in MRCGB UK. And uh, if in case you would like to work in, in the previous country that you mentioned for, before in the Gulf region or in your own country in which MRCGB is recognized, at this point, the MRCB International is a good choice for you uh, because lots of people are, are applying for MRCB International. They want it for UK mainly. I want you to be, uh, I want the picture to be clear to you uh, that it's not the best choice for the MRCG for the UK for working uh, in UK. Okay. Uh, just one second. I will just uh, disable the uh, annotation. I forgot where it is. <laughs> there it is. Disable animation. Okay. So now uh, I think it's clear regarding the recognition. Let's move to the next, which is the exam centers. We have seven exam centers for MRCGB International. The training, uh, there are uh, three, three centers in which training program along with MRCGB International is not mandatory. And there are four Training, uh, training uh, four centers in which training program along with MRCGB International is mandatory. What this means, it means that in order to apply for MRCGB International in Egypt, you must apply along with it to the Egyptian fellowship. And also in Kuwait, you have to apply in a particular pathway there. In Kosovo, we have to apply in a particular training program there inside Kosovo and Malta the same. However, South Asia, Dubai, Cyprus are, are as accepting uh, international applicants from any part of the world uh, if they have particular experience or previous training in any country, not necessarily the country of the center of the exam. Okay, uh, one more thing to be clear about, if you started in one center, you cannot continue in another. Like for example, you started part one in South Asia, you cannot do part two in Dubai. If you start part one in Cyprus, you cannot do part two in South Asia. This is not allowed. You have to start from the beginning if you want to change the center. Except one exception, which is Brunei, which was center number eight, but now it, it's uh, removed. And those who finished AKT in Brunei, but did not finish uh, part two are allowed to resume OSCE in South Asia. This is the only exception where, and was adopted by the RCGP. Now let's move to the eligibility criteria of each center. Eligibility criteria, it's different from one center to another. Let's start with South Asia eligibility criteria. Uh, inter internship, of course, is mandatory, plus any of the following. You will not count internship with the experience years. It's separate. First, yeah, any of the following. Two years training course or two years diploma in family medicine, any of them, or one year training program or one year diploma in family medicine. So you have either two, two year training course or two year diploma or one year plus two years experience. So two years experience 
with one year diploma that's accepted or no need for experience but you should have two year diploma or two year training okay the two years experience one of them should be family medicine or general practice and the other could be anything else like ob like surgery like er whatsoever or pediatric but at least one of them should be gp or family medicine okay but of course if two of them that's more than good uh, the other possibility is five years clinical experience of which a minimum uh, here i would like to point out that no training here there was training here there was training here no training at all but five years clinical experience of which a minimum of three years should be in general practice or family medicine and the rest of the years two years are in family medicine uh, specialty allied to family medicine. What this means, specialty allied to family medicine means OB, surgery, uh, pediatric, and ER, like so, uh, but they will not count laboratory, they will not count radiology, and so on. Yani the para, para clinical, they will not count it there, okay? Uh, there is good one that just changed one year ago, which is you can apply for part, part one only after 18 months of experience, okay? So you don't have to finish five years to apply to part one. You can apply after one and a half year only for part one, and then wait until you finish the five years so that you will be eligible to apply for OSCE exam. So for OSCE exam, you should finish five years, but for part one, you can only wait for one and a half years. This is very good news because lots of uh, fresh uh, graduates, they have a problem in finding any postgraduate that, uh, that uh, fits their criteria, and that fits it. One and a half year is short duration. But they say that at least six months of them should be in family medicine or general practice. Okay, now uh, let's move to the exams. In South Asia, there are two exams. The order is mandatory. So part one, AKT, this first, and then OSCE, you cannot do OSCE before part one. Part one or applied knowledge test exam, is 200 questions in single best uh, answer format, MCQ format. The time allocated for completion of the paper is three and a half hours. Uh, the sites uh, are uh, Abu Dhabi. Abu Dhabi is new, by the way, just this year, uh, before uh, the last year, uh, November, first time before it was only Jeddah in Gulf region, but now they add Abu Dhabi, this is very good. Chennai, Colombo, uh, Dhaka, and Karachi, and New Delhi, and Jeddah, and Lahore. The dates in May and November, but due to COVID, the next one is January. COVID has changed the, the dates, the regular dates, but before COVID, it was May and November every year. The fees is 530 pounds sterling in Jeddah Abu Dhabi, but in other venues, 430 only, and subjected to 10% annual increase. So every year, it almost increased around 10% more or less. Uh, there are unlimited attempts for AKT, so you can apply 100 times, no problem regarding part one, okay? For the OSCE objective structured clinical examination, the exam is 14 stations, each allocated 10 minutes with five rest, sta rest stations, means that uh, 19 station overall, 14 have actual patient and five have no patient. You have to rest 10 minutes, yani 10 minute rest for each of the five stations and one and a half minute between each station and another. Uh, the sites is Karachi and Colombo, Karachi in Pakistan, and Colombo in Sri Lanka. The dates is twice yearly, March and September. Usually each venue is three to five days. So each day have uh, take, taken around uh, like uh, 50 candidates for three to five days. That's a very good number. So they can, uh, because the waiting list is a problem in some other centers like Dubai. So these have shorter waiting lists. You can apply at the same time and you get, you can have a seat for the exam. Uh, due to COVID, next one expected in November 2021. We already have an exam after a couple of days in September. We wish them luck, inshallah. Uh, fees in 2021 is 600 sterling pounds sterling in 2021 uh, with around 10% annual increase. Uh, there are uh, important remarks that passing AKT is mandatory to be eligible for, to sit for OSCE. As we said, order is mandatory. You have six years from AKT passing. So once you pass AKT, you have six years to pass OSCE exam, or you have three OSCE attempts, whichever sooner. Like for example, after passing part one, you applied for OSCE, write the next OSCE, and you didn't clear it. The next one, you didn't clear it. The next one, you didn't clear it. 
and you didn't finish six years yet, but you finish already three attempts, you will have to repeat uh, the equity again, unfortunately. Or the opposite, if you spend six years, but you couldn't uh, appear except once in OSCE attempt, they will not uh, count uh, those, uh, they will not give you a chance to do two more. You have six years to finish three or uh, less, regardless of uh, how many attempts you tried. After passing OSCE, fees to the membership RCB is required, as we said before, depending on the country you live in. Now, let's move to Dubai. Dubai Center eligibility criteria that you should have completed or expected to have completed within three months. Yani, let's say uh, three years except three months, yani, uh, 12, 12, 24, 36, yani 33 months. 33 months of the of, of before the exam, yani, uh, that you have finished vocational training course for family medicine. Okay. Uh, or so so this is the first uh, condition, vocational training, three years in family medicine. Or you have practiced for a minimal of three years full-time or equivalent part-time. For example, if part-time, six years. So uh, minimum three years experience as independent, unsupervised primary care family medicine practitioner in a primary care setting. Yani, uh, we can say general practitioners, okay, but it's uh, very crucial or very important to write the word primary care in your experience. Yani some of the colleagues, they did that and it was accepted, no problem. Yeah, no need to be a family medicine in your job description. No problem, it can be GP, but you have to write a primary care experience, okay? The exams uh, is, uh, so yani to summarize, Dubai is a three-year experience or three-year training, okay? Uh, should be family medicine, no other choices. Exams in Dubai, three exams, not two like South Asia. The order is not mandatory and you can do it all at once. You can do all the exams in one sitting, in one season, because they are not in the same day, no problem. Uh, the written paper is the first paper, the, the first exam. The total time for the exam is three and a half hours consists of 12 questions that can be attempted in any order. Uh, those are short, uh, act, short essay question or uh, enumeration questions. I believe you're all aware of it. Uh, those questions including a curriculum of family medicine and evidence-based medicine. Uh, it's important to notice that and the dates is twice yearly, April and October, and uh, the site is only Dubai, no other site. The fees is 400, uh, for 4,200 uh, Emirates dirhams. And uh, the second exam is the MCQ, the same uh, as the AKT of South Asia. The total time is uh, three hours, not three and a half. So it's very short time uh, to a 200 question. Uh, consists of best of five formats. The date is twice yearly, April and October. The site is Dubai. The fees are the same as a written exam. Final exam is a practical exam, CSA or CCSA, Consulting and Clinical Skills Assessment. It's 14 stations with single rest station in the middle of cases. Uh, and I consider it as exhausting, in fact, uh, because one rest station, while South Asia have five rest stations. The days is twice yearly, April and October, one day venue. I'm not sure if this was updated uh, or not or changed, but this was the last feedback as far as I know from the candidates. Uh, I'm not sure if it changed or not. Uh, the dates the same, April and October, one day venue. This is uh, an issue and this is a problem because of the waiting list for the exam because one day venue and lots of waiting lists, this uh, unfortunately. The site is Dubai and the fees is 4,200 uh, 4, uh, dirhams and CPR certificate is mandatory before sitting to CCSA exam. I believe all of us have the CPR certificate as a requirement for uh, our uh, areas of work. Uh, once passing any of the three exams, uh, you have only three years to finish the other two exams or else you will have to repeat again all the exams. So this is the difference between it and South Asia. In South Asia, you have six years and you have only three attempts for, Os for OSCE. Here you have only three years, but unlimited attempts. And if we counted it, that's around one, two, three. If you have two venues in the year, so you have around five attempts for each uh, exam. Uh, that you have finished that, that you should finish in three years but the problem sometimes the waiting list 
can cannot make you able to att to attend the exam uh, in in the venue you are planning to. Uh, after passing the three exams, fees for membership the same as South Asia. You have to pay for the RCGB. Now, uh, for the Super Center, uh, or uh, and this is uh, under. Uh, the University of Nicosia in uh, Cyprus, the eligibility criteria, uh, you must apply online for online family medicine masters or diploma of University of Nicosia to, up, uh, to apply for part one. This is the only uh, condition, this is the only uh, yeah, uh, condition for applying for part one. However, for part two, you must finish five years experience in primary care to apply for OSCE or uh, we can say it's called simulated surgery. Simulated surgery is the same as CSA, the same as CCSA, the same as OSCE, all of them are the same. Uh, by the way, surgery means uh, in, G in UK, means a clinic. Even you can see it in MCQ, uh, so that it will not be uh, jargon to you. Simulated surgery means the same principle of uh, practical exam, OSCE or CSA. The exams are two exams and order is mandatory. The first one is applied knowledge test, 200 questions, the single best answer, and the allocated time is three hours. The site is only Nicosia, Nicosia, sorry, and it's held uh, online in, uh, in 2021 due to COVID pandemic. It was held online. Uh, anyone can apply online, but I'm not sure if they will keep doing it or this was only an exception because of COVID. Uh, and the dates in September, it's done once annually, the fees is very expensive because it includes the masters and the master's GB. They are not separate. 12,000 euros, that's around $14,000. That's quite, quite expensive. Uh, now we move to the, the next, which is a simulated surgery exam or CSA exam, 14 station with risk stations, the same as the uh, South Asia or Dubai Center. The site is Nicosia, Nicosia. Uh, also, it was held online, and this was uh, 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 a record, in fact, that it was held online uh, just a few months ago, uh, and it was very good, actually. Yani, uh, it was very good, and uh, the candidates, were, they were very uh, happy about it, and uh, I have a colleague who, ha who, was, he's, uh, who uh, is a uh, subscriber to the OSCE course, one-shot course. Uh, her name is Jamouk. She passed, alhamdulillah. Uh, and uh, they used to do, by the way, a mock exam in February, mock exam every February. Uh, the date is in September, uh, and um, annual, as we say, the same as the uh, AKT exam. The fees in 21, the same, uh, the 12,000 uh, euros is for two parts, for the two parts, including the masters, and they include all, and it's one package. So to summarize, this is a comparison between the three different uh, uh, centers. Uh, we will discuss them, I and mean, this is a long schedule, I will not go through in details, but just to uh, summarize what's the best of them, there is no best. We cannot say which one is the best. Uh, you can say which one is the best for you, which one is the best for your own circumstances. Regarding cost, the cheapest is South Asia, and the most expensive is Cyprus, it's obvious. Uh, number of exams, Dubai has this advantage that has extra written exam, while South Asia and Cyprus has two exams. The waiting list for the practical exam, this is a very significant uh, disadvantage in Dubai, which is long. It may reach up to two years waiting for the exam. It's not all the time. It's not all the time, but since there is one day only, I hope they change it in the future uh, to make it more than one day venue of uh, CSA exam. But uh, for now, I believe it's still long waiting list. In South Asia, short or none, and uh, also in Cyprus, no, no waiting list as far as I hear. Difficulty of OSCE exam, the, the most difficult one is South Asia. The passing rate can reach from 60 to 70% or even less than 70%. Very difficult exam as feedback from all the candidates, but uh, the CSA exam is much easier in Dubai and Cyprus, much easier. The passing rate in Dubai up to 85%. Uh, the minimum required experience for part one, uh, the best one is Cyprus because you don't need any experience, but you should finish some 
online diploma task or online masters just need to finish some uh, courses or some uh, online courses from home uh, so this is a very good choice for non-working individuals those who, who are not working uh, not currently working jobless they can apply for separate the best choice the second one is uh, south asia the minimum is 18 months for part one and dubai at least three years to apply for three for part one uh, or any part of the exam uh, or we can say three months before three years yani, uh, almost 33 months the minimum required experience for part two uh, we, this, the longest is south asia and cyprus five years if you have family medicine experience in Dubai, that's three years, that's good, training or experience. The attempts and duration allowed before expiry of past exams, three OSCE trials or six years of passing AKT, South Asia. I believe it's a reasonable one. Uh, Dubai unlimited attempts, but finish in three years. And in Cyprus, as far as I hear, it's unlimited. The order of the exam, AKT, then OSCE, and also Cyprus the same, but Dubai, the advantage that any order or you can do all at once. So those who who wants to who are, who have a, a, a spirit of jeopardy, who want to take a risk, they can take it all at once. If they are uh, if they have uh, don't have a waiting list because the problem of CSA waiting list is still there. Size of the exams, as it, yeah, South Asia is very comfortable, the most comfortable one. There are many parts, many areas uh, for part one. Uh, for uh, part two, it's a bit limited for uh, yeah, the, uh, only Karachi or uh, Colombo, but in Dubai, only Dubai in all parts, and in Cyprus, uh, only Nicosia for uh, for both parts. Uh, I just forgot to edit it that uh, many for part one because I'm not sure about the particular information, which is that part one can be held in UK embassies in any country, but this information is not confirmed not confirmed so i cannot confirm this information but the definite information is that part one is held in nicosia in cyprus so uh, uh now i believe this uh yani we have talked too much uh, now i believe it's better to take uh, some rest okay because uh, the next uh, topics are very important so you can make yourself a cup of tea okay and we'll get back later inshallah to finish the rest of the lecture okay Okay, now we resume our lecture after the break. Uh, now, uh, let's talk about very important topic, which is how to prepare for applied knowledge test uh, or part one examination. Part one main source is family medicine guidelines. Family medicine guidelines, uh, international and uh, European and England English guidelines, the South Asia Center has precisely recommended Oxford Handbook of General Practice, British Natural Formulae, and NICE guidelines, especially for the more common conditions as hypertension, and the WHO guidelines and protocols for local uh, endemic conditions like TB, malaria, vaccination schedules. This is uh, mainly the sources of, of part one. And now, since we know the sources, how to prepare for applied knowledge test. First of all, in the exam, most of the questions are asked in format of clinical case scenario. This is the most challenging thing because those particular type of questions need practice in which they you have to apply the knowledge. It's not enough to know the knowledge, but you have to apply it in clinical case scenario. Memorizing the information is never enough, so you need to train to apply it in case scenario. The best way is to practice by solving as much questions as you can, okay? This is example, okay? Uh, this is example of the format of the questions that comes in the exam. 40-year-old woman complains of incomplete right-sided facial weakness and difficulty with closing her right eye for five days. This was preceded by pain around the ear. Okay, so now let's uh, see, let's read again the scenario. Let's concentrate. The patient is 40 year old woman and she has incomplete right-sided facial weakness. This means that it's, uh, it's not totally unilateral. 
and difficulty closing her eyes, this means that a slower motor neuron. خلاص, every single word has indication. The most important is five days, which actually when I prepared the PowerPoint presentation, I didn't even read those five days. I was in a hurry, I didn't read those five days. Each, each word has a meaning. Each single word has a meaning. Five days itself has an, uh, uh, an, uh, something to, to relate to. Uh, this was preceded by pain around the ear, which is also common in this condition. Of course, what you are assuming that what's the post, what's the diagnosis, right? What's the diagnosis? Lower motor neuron lesion. And you are waiting for the MCQ to look for lower motor neuron lesion or facial palsy or whatsoever. But you will be disappointed that the most appropriate treatment is the question. And this is a tricky question because when you see the choices, a cyclovir antiviral uh, the patient is 40 years and five days, you will ask yourself, you are already aware of the diagnosis, but he's asking double questions. The first question is, what's a diagnosis? You will never answer correctly unless you know the diagnosis correctly. This is number one. Number two, you will, uh, even if you know the diagnosis, you have to know the treatment. So he's asking two questions in a one. What's the diagnosis? What's the treatment in this scenario, this particular scenario? The treatment of facial palsy is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. You know that already, but it not all fits in this case. This case has selective single treatment for it. What is it? Acyclovir, aspirin, carbamazepine, conservative treatment, or prednisolone? What do you think? Yani, if you think uh, acyclovir is one of the things you think about, aspirin, it's not a stroke, so aspirin, I think it's ruled out. Carbamazepine, think of trigeminal neuralgia, no. So anyone who falsely diagnosed the case, he will fail in those aspirin or carbamazepine. But those who already know the diagnosis, they will be confused between acyclovir, conservative, and prednisolone. Uh, prednisolone, this is the one I choose, in fact, before reading five days. But five days is already long duration to give prednisolone. It's already too late. So prednisolone won't help at this point, the same as acyclovir because the patient's 40 years is not immunocompromised, not indicated to give acyclovir. So the answer will be conservative treatment. But since I didn't read uh, the five days duration, I choose prednisolone. So this is the trick that anyone, even the good one, can make mistakes if you did not read the question clearly. This is an example. Uh, of uh, the tricky questions. By the way, this exam is in the sample MCQ in the MRCGB South Asia website, okay? So uh, we have here question banks to practice on these questions. We have two question banks, the most common. Uh, the, the famous ones are past medicine or uh, on examination. Just give me a message that my internet connection is unstable. And they can now say, okay, so let's proceed. The, the, the two options is uh, past medicine or on examination. One is enough. Yani no need to finish the two uh, questions, uh, banks, because there are uh, too many questions. For text reading, use only one source. The recommended is the Oxford Handbook of General Practice. As you know earlier, that's recommended by name in the MRCGB South Asia Center website. Uh, you can read also my own experience for passing part one with other advice. You can see it in the Facebook uh, group. Uh, regarding the MCQ, recommended study way for AKT exam, I highly recommend first to solve the question bank questions. Solve the whole question bank and then repeat solving the wrongly answered questions in number one step, which is the question bank. So uh, the most important is always, always work on your weak points. I'll always say that uh, to everyone, do not distribute your effort equally to all the areas, to all the topic. Everyone has its own fingerprint in the knowledge. You are good in diabetes, but you are not good in hypertension. You are perfect in neurology, but you are bad in cardiology. You have to spend uh, more effort in the areas you are weak on. So, Wrong answer should be solved twice so that you can know you identify your weak points and work more on it, okay? Uh, also, 
repeat solving the wrongly answered questions in number two step. So when you repeat, when you answer, uh, re uh, sorry, the question bank first, let me clarify. The question bank, it can mark your wrong answers, okay? This is a benefit in question banks. They can mark your wrong answer. So when you finish the whole question bank, you can ask to uh, resolve again the wrong ans the wrongly answered questions. They will show it to you again without the answer, without your answers. They will show it again as if you are solving for the first time. If again you fail those answers, this is a critical one. You you answered the question wrongly twice. This is a critical one, so you should repeat it again, solving again the questions in number two step, which is uh, answering wrongly twice, okay? Uh, read Oxford Handbook of General Practice. I think this is the minimum, the minimum that can be done for preparation of AKT exam. It's, it's not difficult exam, but it's not an easy exam, okay? It needs very good preparation, and this preparation can help you later in OSCE exam, in the next exam, inshallah, or the written exam in Dubai uh, Center, uh, because you don't have to go through the knowledge all over again. You are already have a basic knowledge or applied knowledge that you want to only to uh, uh, justify it to or, or uh, manipulate it to OSCE format, that's all. Okay. Uh, so there is a suggested schedule for preparation in the next three and a half months. Uh, that's around one and a half, 105 days. So this schedule is suggested for the people who are appearing in next January 2022 exam in South Asia Center, or it fits anyone, anywhere, anytime. Because uh, those who might listen to the recordings right now, maybe they have plans to appear in 2022, in, 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 the, in the late 2022, or 23, or any time they can use the schedule that can fit anytime, anywhere, any center, okay? Uh, now, Bus Medicine has 4,378 4, questions. Bus Medicine is better than one, exa one examination in one thing, which is uh, it has extensive clarification of the answer. The answers explanation in MCQ, which is also present in our examination, it's more extensive in past medicine, more detailed. And maybe this can help you to read more about the topic and can help you to have some kind of background knowledge to answer a similar question. Because in the exam, those 4,378 questions, not single question will be repeated in the exam. I guarantee not a single question. You will see the same in your exam, but they will be similar. So. Your purpose is not to memorize the questions. The purpose is to practice and have a background knowledge. So this is a benefit of bus medicine that give you background knowledge, extensive back, background knowledge to have when you finish each question, okay? There is administration part that's not required in international AKT exam. So you will finish all the parts except the administration part. So the all the parts without administration is 4,378. How to finish them in 105 days? First of all, 60 questions daily for the first 73 days or 75, and then solve wrongly answered questions for the first time. As we said before, this is uh, the technique we agreed to do it, to repeat the solving wrong answer and repeat solving the wrongly answered again. So we will do it here, we will apply it here. Solve the wrongly answered questions for the first time. Let's assume, and this is, I think this is the worst thing and it can be even less than that, but let's assume that 50% of the questions you solved, uh, solved it wrong. So uh, that's around 2,189 question. If we divide it by 20 days, you will solve 110 question. Maybe you'll say like 60 questions is too much or 110 questions is too much. Uh, first of all, I agree with you that 60 questions daily is too much, but uh, this is how it is in case you want to appear after three and a half months. If you think your time or your schedule at work or your personal life is not sufficient to finish 60 questions daily, in the next 73 days, reconsider to postpone your exam. Let's talk clearly. Let's talk clearly. P consider seriously to 
postpone your exam. Prepare well and pass from one shot. This is my principle. Prepare well and pass from one shot. Uh, also, the 100 question, maybe some of you will say like, that's too much. I, I barely finished 60 questions. This time they are repeated. This time the question is not the first time you read. So believe me, 110 question is not too much. You can finish it. If you can finish 60, 60 new questions in one day, you can finish 110 repeated question and even more in one day. Trust me, okay? The third one, uh, third step is to solve the wrongly answered questions in step two, which is this one. So if you solve the 2,189 and again, you solve some of them wrongly and assuming that there will be 50% of them, so they are around 1,094. Those questions you can solve 180 questions for eight days, okay? Because they are already seen twice. You don't have even to finish the scenario. You are already aware of the question. You're just, your point to solve those questions is to identify what's the problem with your knowledge in this area. This is the issue. And when you see the next schedule, when I make it, uh, the most important in this critical period is to make flashcards because this is a critical weak point in your knowledge. Those questions that are solved wrongly twice is a critical weak point. You should give them all the effort to make them strong points rather than weak points, okay? Also synchronously, Oxford handbook uh, should be read from the first day. Uh, there are nine, 950 pages that are related to our exam from page 160, 160 to 1109. Uh, you can read as 11 pages daily for 90 days, okay? This is uh, regarding Oxford general practice. Just read, don't memorize. And the same as question, read, read. The, the question, the exam is MCQ that's related to understanding and applying. You don't have to memorize from the first day. Just memorize those, those weak points. You have to memorize them. There is no other solution. So, and I don't uh, deny that there are some areas with, in which you need to memorize, but just by practice, you will memorize. Don't give effort in memorizing uh, on the expense of practicing. Practice, 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 and by time, the information will stick into your mind, okay? Revise again the 70 pages daily for 30 days. After finishing 90 days, that 950, at the last 30 days, you can finish 70 pages daily because you already read uh, some of the 950 pages. Some of them are useless. They, are, they have very few important information. They are already expert since you finished those 90 days. So you will spend no time in those pages and lots of them have uh, diagrams, have pictures. So those 70 pages can finish in no time. And I believe me, in my exam, I finished Oxford Handbook in three days three days before the exam, reading from, from, from scratch. It was the first time even. So it's not that difficult. It's very easy. So to summarize, uh, those 105 days, this is a schedule, the same as we said before, halas, but just I'm dividing it uh, two days, two stations, yani from day one until day 105. If you notice that 105, if you start in 1st of October, for those appearing in January, if you start in 1st of October, you will finish in 15th of January, exactly. And the exam is 19. So you have like five days to revise anything or just to refresh up your mind or do any extra tasks or delayed task. The most important here is to make flashcards for difficult points. This is very crucial to you are, uh, you have done all this effort to identify those. You need to identify your weak points and make flashcards. Flashcards are the, a very good principle. I explain it in details in my exam experience and you can refer back to it in the Facebook page, but simply it's uh, making cards and just writing the difficult points to memorize and read those cards every day, every day before you sleep. It won't, just read, don't memorize, just read before sleeping, uh, read while you are in airport, before the exam, read, keep reading. And by time you will memorize them as the back of your head. Okay. 
Uh, now I made a schedule, but for six months. Six months for those who have plans to appear in May exam or the exam following January, or those who want to appear in Dubai in the next April exam, they have six months from now. So they can extend their schedule, make it more relaxed. It's the same schedule as the one before, only with one more thing, which is to repeat again the question, sorry, uh, receipt pass medicine. Uh, so this schedule is the same as the previous one with single difference is receiving all the questions to repeat them back again. Read, uh, yani, uh, answering all the questions again, including the one you answered correctly. Those only for those who have relaxed schedule. And uh, by the way, yani, I read before, I think I read before, but I can't remember the source, that if you answered one question correctly, it's there is 95% possibility that in the exam, you will answer the same question, uh, the same answer. So don't be anxious to repeat the questions that you answered correctly. Uh, those uh, people who have 105 days, uh, if you finish like, for example, 50% of the questions of past medicine, you finish, you, you answer them correctly from first time, don't be anxious to solve them again. I promise you, inshallah, if they, in the exam, if such questions uh, came back to you again, you will answer them correctly again. The problem is in the wrong answer. The wrong answer is this means you have an issue. Uh, and by the way, most of the questions, in my own experience, most of the wrong questions is because of lack of concentration. Yani sometimes you are competent, competent in knowledge, but the problem is you did not read the, the, the question very well. And you should have a skill of picking up the clues in the question. This is very important. So uh, your weak points here is not necessarily knowledge weak points. It could be observation weak points. You got what I mean? So uh, that's all. And I also, I can, after the lecture, I can give you this uh, handout of the lecture to refer back to the schedule if you want to refer back to it, okay? So now we're done with preparation, how to prepare for part one. Uh, how can I help you? How, how can one-shot courses provide you in part one preparation? I can help you in three ways. First of all, connect you to the WhatsApp study group. The second is to help you on on-demand help and guidance, okay? And the third one is, uh, inshallah, hopefully I will do the evidence-based medicine and statistics curriculum. I'm going to summarize it in explanation lectures, inshallah, hopefully in uh, next December. Uh, all the above services are free of charge because some colleagues are asking, what are the fees? The fees is one thing, is to pass your AKT exam. That's my reward. Just pass the exam and uh, let me be a reason for that. That would be my greatest reward. Okay. Uh, so uh, now let's move to the WhatsApp group. Uh, this is new thing I, I never done before for AKT exams. Uh, the benefits of WhatsApp group will be is to help you to stick to the schedule. Uh, in case you you are alone, it's different than being with, with lots of group who are in the same uh, corner that you are in. You will help each other to stick to the schedule. And also group discussion. This is very, very, very beneficial uh, group discussion of difficult questions and difficult topics. Uh, the principle of WhatsApp uh, groups, to be clear to everyone, it's not just uh, a group that uh, uh, one, one speaker, which is me, no, this is not correct. It will be uh, all speakers. Everyone is encouraged to participate actively. We will all participate. We will all share our knowledge. I have colleagues here who are uh, experts. Wallahi, I'm learning from them. They have already finished uh, M uh, MRCP exams and they are uh, finishing MRCP and MRCGP synchronously. So they are experts, literally. And uh, it's a good chance to learn from them. So we are sharing knowledge. We are sharing knowledge in this WhatsApp group. Uh, and inshallah, I just, I, yani it's, uh, it's a commitment, but it's not a promise that any difficult topics or any difficult questions can be uh, discussed in the group, inshallah, I will make sure that's all cleared, either by me or by any of you. We will all cooperate in that, inshallah, hopefully, that uh, no one will have any problem in any 
question in any topic. We can have daily discussion about the difficult topics, difficult questions in past medicine, any obvious contradictory between questions. And we can have discussion about that. We can look it up. We can find the evidence-based guidelines about it. We can discover any mistakes and so on. This is very yani, rich discussion, inshallah, that's going to uh, happen uh, and depending on you, inshallah. Uh, very important H is the exchange of knowledge. Very important, very crucial. However, uh, rules are very important because uh, my own experience, and I think you agree with me that lots of WhatsApp groups turn out to be uh, social WhatsApp groups. And this, yani, I'm not against socializing, I, not at all. But uh, my point is we have million social groups. So is it okay to have single scientific group? Okay, so let's agree that we will make this group as only scientific one to save your time, only respecting you and saving your own time. It will be only scientific, no room for social uh, discussions. Uh, and also for uh, seriousness and for uh, yani, uh, showing uh, that people are serious in studying, past medicine subscription is mandatory to join. So anyone would like to join WhatsApp uh, should subscribe to past medicine. Uh, we agreed that past medicine because we will solve it all together, we have discussion about it all together. And we agreed that past medicine, it's much better than on, on examination regarding the uh, extensive information provided. So we can choose past medicine, at least for a group. And also, English is the only allowed language because we have non-Arabic speakers, colleagues. So any single discussion should be in English, Arabic, or any other language is not allowed. And only, as we said, scientific discussions only. Uh, who make the ground rules? Who made them? You. You are the one to make them. So um, I just suggested three uh, ground rules, but if you disagree with any of them, if you would like to change them or add anything at four or five or six or seven or even 20, you can help me to set them because the first time. So I need your own point of view. I need your voice. So please just tell me your suggestions. And after a couple of days, inshallah, we will set this group inshallah, and we will start from 1st of October for those appearing in January, inshallah. And uh, as I said, this is a help to you, okay? So help me to help you. This is simply. And it's not something that is exclusive for one shot. You can, I just give an idea. I just, I just give an idea. I just give a schedule. You can make your own group WhatsApp. You can make your own WhatsApp group. You can make your own ground rules. You can make your own schedule. You can make anything. So it's not just something man, yani, exclusive for me. It's not something mandatory for me. I'm just helping you guys to help yourself, okay? And I'm very happy to uh, for any suggestions, for any uh, new ideas. This is my own idea. I just made it up, but maybe uh, some of you have better idea. So we can share it together, okay? Uh, also, I will make application form to make it easier in case just to... Uh, that some of the yani, candidates are not aware about the ground rules. I will make application form so that anyone will read the ground rules before uh, uh, giving the link for the uh, WhatsApp group. And after submitting the form, you will be enrolled in the group in a few days, inshallah. For January 22 uh, AKT exam group, it will start on 1st of October, as we mentioned earlier, okay? The second help I provide, which is on-demand help, as I told you, uh, I am committed to you, but I will do my best, okay? I, I can admit that I sometimes I have difficulty in time management, and uh, I really, if someone could help me with that, <laughs> that would be, I, it could do me a great favor. So because of time, sometimes I could not respond to all the queries, to all the questions, uh, to all the promises of uh, explanation, clarification, but as long as I'm alive and breathing and have time, I'm more than happy to help you and guide you promptly, okay? So I will do my best as a human being. I promise you, okay? Inshallah. In WhatsApp group, I will answer all the questions as much as I'm able to with the help of group discussions. So uh, in group, uh, what's in WhatsApp group, uh, I, I prefer that everyone should share their knowledge, okay? When you share your knowledge in something you are expert in, 
somebody will share his knowledge in some some area you are weak in. So it's exchange. You know, like you are buying something and selling something at the same time. And I will be uh, yani happy to help you all. And also I'll be happy to learn from you as well. Okay. My personal WhatsApp is open 24-7 for any queries. And you all know. Okay. Regarding the evidence-based medicine and statistics, inshallah, I will explain the curriculum of MRCGB International because it's very difficult for uh, yani lots of candidates. And it's something that not all the candidates even took it in the undergraduate. And uh, for the exam, to be honest, for the exam, it's not more than five questions out of 200. However, I, I prefer if it's something that can make your uh, life easier, uh, it's okay to learn it, okay? Yani it's, uh, uh, I would like to say to you that MRCGP International is not just a certificate to get a good uh, salary. It's a learning experience, okay? So as a family medicine, it's not appropriate to have a good certificate like MRCB International, and you have no idea about evidence-based medicine. You have no idea about research. If somebody talk with you about meta-analysis or talk about case control study, you have no idea what they are talking about. This is totally unaccepted, un uh, un uh, unaccepted. So I think we, you, we all agree that MRCGP is a learning experience. We could do our best to be a good doctors, to treat our patient better, to be in good position uh, in scientifically, academically, uh, clinically, everything, okay? So that's my point. And also in Dubai, in written exam, evidence-based medicine is required to be competent at. So I'll just try to explain uh, the curriculum. Inshallah, I will give priority to the more common areas in the curriculum. And I will try to cover all the areas that past medicine is covering, but I think past medicine is expanding too much in statistics. Just to, to clarify that to you, I will try to give priority for the common areas in family medicine practice regarding evidence-based medicine statistics. And if there is more time, I will explain the difficult or ambitious uh, things that or questions in statistics in past medicine, because uh, I think past medicine is uh, expanding too much in statistics in areas that are unlikely to appear in the exam, inshallah. Okay. Also, it will be recorded for later watching and it will be published in the official website, inshallah. Uh, expected to be in December. Okay. So let's start uh, practicing in the other uh, branches and leave the evidence based medicine until the end. Inshallah, before starting the MCQ of, uh, uh, yani before starting the uh, practicing of uh, statistic questions, I will, uh, the lectures will be ready for you, okay? Now regarding the OSCE exam, just briefing because I know that uh, all of you or most of you are preparing for AKT exam. So this is just, uh, you know, just briefing for the OSCE exam. Uh, inshallah, I will wait for you once you finish part one. I'll be happy to serve you also in OSCE exam. We are together until we celebrate your success and uh, your certificate, inshallah. The OSCE exam evaluating your consultation and clinical skills composed of 14 stations, like we said earlier, 14 simulated patients, none of them is true patient, not like the MRCP. MRCP, you can hear a murmur, you can hear lots of clinical findings. In MRCGP, none of them has any findings. So just actor, you are acting and the patient is acting. Each station is 10 minutes only. You are required to do history taking, relevant clinical examination and management. The same as real life practice needs lots of practice. Uh, there is examiner sitting with you in the room with the patient, but he's silent, not talking to you, not discussing with you after the case like MRCP. And he is evaluating your performance in mark sheet for forming categories, data gathering, how to take history, communication skills, how to care for the patient needs and his welfare, showing empathy, and examination skills and counseling skills and management skills and investigation skills according to the updated knowledge. Uh, the problem in OSCE exam, books are never enough. Unlike AKT exam, the books are not enough. They need to be practice, physical practice for the exam. Uh, to prepare for OSCE exam, three cornerstones for OSCE exam, which is 
to understand how to practice. It's very important because some people are rushing to practice without knowing how to practice. They are practicing, for example, in, M in MRCP format. It's not useful. It should be MRCGP international format. The source of knowledge for CSA and OSCE exam based uh, because in AKT knowledge, you can, uh, you will find lots of etiology, pathophysiology, uh, lots of uh, uh, items that are not related to OSCE exam. OSCE exam knowledge is different. It's, uh, um, I mean, not different that it's totally different. Uh, it's not that what I mean. What I mean is the format of the knowledge is different, the format itself. In OSCE exam, you need differential diagnosis, uh, red flags, and investigation and explanation of the diagnosis. For example, this is something you did not know in applied knowledge test, how to explain a diagnosis in simple term to the patient. This is something to cover in OSCE exam knowledge. Also practicing is very important, of course. Uh, regarding the first, po first point, which is understand how to practice. Uh, you have two options, either on your own, or to take an orientation course. If you do that on your own by reading or watching random internet sources, it will take longer time and not guaranteed to get the correct materials. However, by taking a structured course based on MRCB international exam format, you will save time, systemize your brain, and put you on track from the beginning. This is very important because some people think that OSCE exam uh, course is a luxury. In fact, it's, it's uh, highly recommended, to be honest. Uh, not necessarily one short course, any course, but you need to be fully oriented about how to prepare for the exam. Also, the source for the knowledge uh, should be OSCE or CSA based, like CSA Symptom Solver and CSA Revision Notes, Get Through MRCGB and MRCGB CSK, CSA Cases. Those are the most famous books. Uh, the source should be updated. Like for example, CSA Symptom Solver is very good, excellent book, but it's not updated. The latest edition is 2014. So you need to know what's the updated knowledge from, uh, and uh, there are many mistakes because of this unupdated knowledge. Uh, and online guidelines like NICE and WHO is also important to be aware of. Uh, the practice is the most important and the most neglected, you'll be surprised that the most neglected part is the practice because uh, lots of candidates, they think that knowledge is enough and they think it's very easy. Like exactly like the knowing how to drive. This is very easy. I can know how to drive. But when applying to drive, you will find that there are, it need practice. It's not easy. Uh, you should practice enough and correctly. These are the two main corners of practicing. Missing any of the two or both is the main reason why candidates fail in OSCE exam. Practicing enough because some people practice correctly, but practice five or six cases, that's not enough. And some people practice 100 cases, but they are practicing in the wrong way. So any of them can re uh, not fulfilled practicing enough, practicing correctly can result in uh, not clearing OSCE exam. Practice is 50% of the exam score to be known. Yani 50% if you if you did not practice, this means that there is 50% chance that you will fail. This is this is serious. Okay. So practice is very important. What can one shot courses provide you for OSCE examination? There are three domains for preparation, uh, which is understand how to practice, source of knowledge, and practice. The three domains that we talked earlier, how can I help you with them? Understanding how to practice, I provide that in section one, contains all what you need to know how to practice. And source of knowledge for C OSCE CCA exam, uh, there is uh, in section two and three, 280 topics from 16 updated sources. Get through MRCGB, CSA revision notes, symptom solver, Oxford, uh, past medicine, NICE, WHO, up to date, BMG best practice, NHS, National Health Society, CKS Nice, GP Notebook, and patient.com, and RCGP learning website, all in one source. All these sources I reviewed, I took what's the best of CSA symptom solver, 
but the updates, I updated it according to the most recent guidelines. And I took from past medicine what applies to OSCE and so on. I took from a flower from each tree, as they say, uh, uh, for a flower from each garden. Uh, but eventually I made a single source that can help you and can save time to go through all these resources. What else uh, regarding practice? OSCE exam uh, orientation course can help you to practice through section two contains clear pathway to practice. So I, I teach you how to practice correctly on your own with the colleagues and also focus examination videos that cover performance explanation videos for over 80 common cases in the MRCGP International. These are video performance, how to do the examination in MRCGP International format specifically for the most common 80 cases. And over, uh, this is inshallah in next uh, release, in fourth edition release 2022, over 100 written ready-made case scenarios that will help you to practice with your colleagues with fully performed 20 cases as key answer. Uh, they are performed out of those 100 so that you can compare your performance with it and marking sheet for some cases to self mark yourself and your own performance. There are extra sources, also extra courses uh, on demand and availability, like mock exam, like solo extensive practice course and examiner audit service. You can read more about them in the Facebook groups. Uh, since 2018, uh, Alhamdulillah, I started to give courses for OSCE exam. And uh, Alhamdulillah, I'm proud that we helped over 100 colleagues to pass the OSCE exam. Uh, and uh, regarding now we finish with how to apply, how to prepare for OSCE uh, part one and OSCE exam. Now the final part in our lecture which is how to apply for MRCGP international exam. Uh, we will take only the three uh, centers which, which accept from overseas uh, international candidates without training program. Uh, for Cyprus, contact this email, which is related to the University of Nicosia. It will be, you will be directed data for the process of application. You could have online interview for acceptance and then they will tell you the detailed requirement for uh, processing your application. For the way, once the registration date comes at the website, uh, send the following to the email, photocopy of current certificate of registration. I will try to use some Arabic words to explain uh, to my uh, Arabic colleagues as well as English. Uh, photocopy of current certificate of registration means uh, means uh, like for example the Saudi Council certificate uh, like the certificate of, of license of practice as a, a practitioner also photocopy of passport photocopy of qualification like baccalaureate degree or whatsoever two photographs endorsed by senior member of department means that uh, yani photo, photograph signed by your head of department that you are the right person in the photo. Uh, also copy of documentation as evidence of eligibility means that if you have three years training as eligibility, you have to provide this document or you have three year experience, you have to provide this as a document. Uh, also completed and uh, valid certificate of competence in cardiopulmonary resuscitation, the CPR, as we mentioned earlier. And after application approval, you will be directed to payment. So we'll send those papers by email once the registration date uh, opens in the website of Dubai, MRCGP, uh, Dubai uh, Health, I think, Authority. Uh, you can uh, just search in Google, just write Dubai MRCGP and you will find the website and uh, check the dates and fees. Uh, you will up, uh, send those papers and once you get uh, acceptance, uh, you will be directed to the payment. Uh, for South Asia, once registration opens in the website, you have to download the application form. There is an application form that opens only for download once the registration opens. Uh, you have to download it and print it and fill it by handwriting and you'll have to attach all the required documents and send it as hard copy, not by email. Send it by hard copy with the payment draft to this address that's present. They will write the address in the website application uh, registration uh, reg uh, regulations. You can download the file and you'll find the address. You can attach this address. You can send it by FedEx, you can send it by DHL 
or by mail or whatsoever. But try to send it as urgent so that you can get a seat for OSCE exam mainly, I mean this, but for AKT, no problem, you can send it with regular mail because sometimes there are seats, available seats, but it's important to make sure that's before the registration closes, okay? I think registration takes around one uh, month or something like this. Uh, this is the application form of South Asia. I have to explain it uh, yani, uh, by detail, and I'm sorry for that, uh, if that was a bit boring for you, but uh, because it, uh, some candidates face some difficulty in it. So I thought maybe I should explain it all. First of all, you will just uh, bring a passport size photo over here. And then you will write the candidate ID number, just write it in case you applied before for part one and you have been given ID number. But if not, uh, just leave it blank. If you applied before to part one or in case you uncleared OSCE for three times and you have to go through part one again, Anyone who have any previous exam, he should have ID number, then write it here. The last name, surname, and uh, the, the four name, I think the first name, and uh, full name, this is your first, second, third, or last name. Uh, just write full name here, and then the address, your address, and uh, phone numbers, it's all clear, email, and then any previous part one exams, you have to write them in details. Uh, don't try to play smart and uh, not write it, they will know. So just you have to write it, okay. And uh, I'm just, uh, I cannot see the, the first uh, part. That's okay, okay, the, because uh, I have a list here, I have, uh, just uh, remove it a bit. There you go. Uh, name and location of medical school graduate. You just write the medical school graduation, date of qualification, and uh, country of postgraduate clinical experience, country of ethnic origin. You just write your, your original country. Registration authority. This means the, uh, the country in which you, uh, you, have, you have given a, land, a license to practice. Like, for example, if you are working in Saudi Arabia and you have uh, a license uh, to practice, so you just write Saudi Council. In UAE, for example, you just write the registration authority. In Egypt, medical syndicate. In Pakistan, the, 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 I'm not aware of the organization authority, but just write the authority and then write your license number, like Saudi Council number whatsoever, and date of full registration. This means that the date uh, yani eligibility means, I'm sorry, uh, here means that the date of expiry. So you can just write, write the date of full uh, registration or the date of expiry of uh, registration. In case you don't have expiry date, just write the date of granting the registration. It's not that important. So just yani, don't worry about it, okay? Now, the next one is um, uh, the, the eligibility. You have to write uh, which eligibility criteria you fulfilled. You have to checklist it. And then, so the next one is the, you will choose the center that you will apply to, okay? Uh, and then here, you will write the bank account the, uh, from which you issued the draft, the draft that you will present the draft the same like check that you will pay for uh, the, the, the fees of the course of the, of the exam, you will pay it through a draft. Uh, and this draft should have a bank account from which it was issued. You have to write the bank account, even if it's not your account, not your own account, a friend account, just write the bank account number, the IBAN number and the bank name, that's all. Okay, uh, the next one is, uh, any uh, acknowledgement and you will attach the following photocopy of qualification and registration documentation you have to write, you have to uh, translate it if it's not in english and by the way they ask uh, to be accredited uh, place for uh, translation uh, but uh, yani i i received feedback from some colleagues they have translated it themselves but translation should be clear in english clear and they, it was accepted, no problem. And in case they refused it, they will ask you to send it back again. 
uh, by email or something as uh, يعني a credit one. But uh, as far as I know, just to save money for uh, يعني uh, translating in a credit area, uh, it's okay to translate it yourself, but make sure you translate it correctly. I believe the board of South Asia, they know Arabic. Uh, also, uh, one passport size photograph endorsed by your department head supervisor. They know Arabic because they, I know some, some of them uh, used to work in Saudi Arabia. This uh, information I know for sure. Uh, one passport size photograph, okay. Endorsed by your department head is not necessarily, okay. Yani it's not necessary, just send the photo, uh, attach the photo, whether you have department head uh, signed or not, it's not important. Okay, job, this, job experience certificate, and uh, this is clear, private practice certificate uh, to prove that you fulfill the eligibility criteria. They accept any part of any, any kind of uh, certificate. It's not necessary to be authenticated. Yani Okay, it's okay. Uh, bank draft may be payable to MRCB South Asia. It should be like this, okay? Me, uh, just write the name of the uh, board, MRCB International South Asia, not name of a person. You will write this name and you will write the, you will choose the amount. This is the draft, it looks like this. And it should have something called MICR number, Magnetic Ink Character Recognition. It looks like this. So make sure whatever bank you are using, you have to make sure they have this code because if not, they will refuse the payment. They will return it back to you. And uh, this is one of the methods to pay the draft. The other method is to pay through uh, teletransfer. Teletransfer is by uh, transferring to a bank account and you just uh, you need to endorse the telegraphic transfer uh, receipt with the requirements as a hard copy. And then you will sign this application, write full name and date, and uh, then you will uh, you will leave this as blank and attach the rest of papers and send it as hard copy to the address that I mentioned earlier. This concludes the lecture for today. Uh, follow me in uh, those following areas. The website, the official website is launched, alhamdulillah. Uh, just still under structure, yani under uh, construction, some links are still invalid, but inshallah, in the next uh, couple of weeks, it will be uh, fully launched. So it will go live, inshallah. Also, there's application, inshallah, also uh, Google Play and iPhone with the same name. Also, follow me in the WhatsApp, uh, uh, in the Facebook uh, page, and uh, my number, WhatsApp, all of you know it, and also Signal and Telegram and my email, inshallah. So, um, I will wait for your feedback and suggestions regarding the WhatsApp group so that we can launch it as soon as possible, inshallah. And now we will leave the floor for uh, any questions. If anyone have any questions, more than welcome to ask now. I'm just checking the WhatsApp if anyone sent any message. Okay. Uh, okay, can I get uh, the link for the WhatsApp group? Okay, the as we said before, the WhatsApp group, we will first uh, make uh, application form. I will send, I will distribute it in the Facebook, inshallah, and the official website so that anyone would like to join, we'll have to fill this application form first. And then uh, after getting the suggestions, if there are any suggestions regarding the ground rules of the WhatsApp group, any other suggestions, and then we're going to launch the groups, inshallah, the group, the WhatsApp group. Uh, we will launch it to start before October, inshallah. So in the couple of days, uh, and I will just collect your suggestions and then, uh, we will uh, make this application form for all of you to fill it. And uh, all those who fill it, they will be uh, joined automatically to WhatsApp group, okay? Uh, this is a question from uh, Dr. Abdul Khalik. How can we become a part of WhatsApp group? As I said before, uh, this WhatsApp group is only for those who are appearing in uh, applied knowledge test exam in the next exam. 
يعني it's not just a scientific group or something like this. No, this group has a purpose. Only part one exam candidates who are planning to appear in the next AKT exam. Not necessarily that they should have registered in the exam because the registration is not opened yet, but just to have a plan to appear in the exam, serious plan to appear in the exam and to show uh, being serious in uh, participation and in, uh, in joining the group, uh, the candidate should, apply, should uh, have a subscription in uh, past medicine before joining the group. This uh, is yani the ground rule that we agreed uh, that we that I made. Yani. If anyone else have any other suggestion, I'm, I'm happy to hear from all of you. Okay. Uh, any other questions? Okay, question regarding uh, COVID situation. Yeah, the COVID situation is uh, subjected to changes and it's totally unpredictable. Okay, this is, this is a problem. Uh, so we cannot predict anything. Okay, but I just know one thing that uh, people and the world has to deal, has to live with this COVID. Okay, the, the life has to move on. Everyone has to move on and life should go on. And uh, I think this uh, yani this uh, last two years that happened, I think it will not happen again in the same way. Yani, uh, I, even even if, uh, if uh, COVID gone viral or become worse, la qadar Allah, uh, I think the world will not react the same as uh, it happened uh, as uh, as uh, what happened before, the curfew and everything, I, I think it will not uh, happen like this. And I, I think because uh, people start to realize that uh, COVID will stay with us. Unfortunately, this is, it's a fact. I, mean, I think COVID will stay with us and we have to live with it. And uh, I think this already has been announced by the WHO. So we all need to have vaccination and we need to have later on maybe a booster dose for the new strains and that's it it will be seasonal disease that we have to live with it and by time hopefully inshallah that uh, the death rate will be much less and will be the same like uh, flu okay hopefully yani. okay uh, i want to be part from a whatsapp group for uh, part one akt generally yes sure sure Dr. Azza. thank you very much for your uh, nice words uh, yeah yes i uh, as i told you the process first is to collect your suggestions from all the channels that we said earlier either a website or email or whatsapp or telegram or signal or facebook or any, any channel of communication that you choose just uh, submit your suggestions i need to hear from you i need to know what you want what you like okay because it's not one way decision it's a shared decision, okay? And after I collect all your decisions or your suggestions, we will start to implement the group and launch it. And I will make application form just to, because uh, yani, if we are expecting large number, it will be difficult to, to deliver uh, all the ground rules to everyone. Yani not all attended the lectures, not all is aware of the ground rules. So everyone should be aware before joining the group. So I will make this application form to, for persons to, to read the ground rules and be aware of it and to be clear. And once they submit the form, they will be automatically uh, joined into uh, the WhatsApp. Okay. Uh, I prefer WhatsApp or Telegram. I'm sorry, I did not understand your question. Yani, prefer WhatsApp or Telegram. Uh, Telegram, yani, I think the, the, the benefit in Telegram is uh, that the, the old conversations are recorded. They are not, uh, like for example, a new person who joined the group, he will not, in WhatsApp, he will not be able to see the previous conversations. Uh, but in Telegram, uh, everyone can see all the previous conversations. So I think this is a benefit in Telegram rather than WhatsApp. But uh, I would like to hear from you if you all think that Telegram is better. Uh, to be honest, yani in Telegram, I'm not comfortable with it the same like WhatsApp, but, uh, if you think that Telegram is better, then uh, as I told you, I'm hearing from you so that uh, we can do the best. Yani, uh, I think as uh, organizer and as uh, organization and as uh, sharing and uh, admin and uh, 
يعني the organization areas I think WhatsApp is more practical for me so <laughs> that's why I choose WhatsApp but uh, it's up to you يعني we can listen to all of you and see the discussion okay yes okay it's not a question it's an answer to your question about preference yes yes okay okay that's clear okay uh, okay one question uh, regarding the online exams and uh, is there any expectation that the exams the connection is unstable okay i think it's back now uh, that uh, is there any possibility that the exams will be online in the future no one knows for sure okay but uh, what i know is that uh, cyprus has already implemented online uh, oski exam or simulated surgery exam and online ekt exam and both of them have succeeded yani they were they worked fine they were uh, they were excellent and uh, by the way they have evaluated even the examination skills in uh, in cyprus uh, by asking what you will examine and by the way i forgot to say that cyprus has a telephone uh, telephone conversation station this is uh, different in uh, than dubai in south asia they don't have uh, and all that was implemented online that was uh, something yani, excellent and in uh, by the way mrcgb uk they cancelled the oski exam since covid they replaced it with the rca exam rca exam is to it's not actually exam is to uh, videotape yourself counseling through patient and sending those videos to the <laughs> mrcgb body so uh, as i told you yani, uh, uh, we are adopting in very fast way to the current situation so i will not be surprised if uh, online exam has been held by any of the other two centers dubai or uh, south asia and even south asia board has uh, they are holding uh, oski course every year they held it online this time so uh, everything is possible okay so just let's be uh, let's do our best and let's adapt with any situation whatever it is we are ready for everything we are prepared for anything we're just doing our best and inshallah i'm sure we are uh, we, we, we will adopt any situation whatever it is inshallah okay uh, okay i think that's all the questions and if there are any further questions you can uh, send me in any of uh, the channels uh, the, the channels that you mentioned and uh, i'm really happy for this lecture thank you very much for your time and uh, inshallah we'll contact you later let's be in touch thank you very much assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh